Hey everyone, my name is Chad. This is the step-by-step -step guide for CloudOffice, a project that I wrote. And this guide is specific to Ubuntu deployments. So if you've got an Ubuntu server at home, a virtual machine, or you're running it in the cloud in your own cloud environment and it's not managed in one of the cloud providers that I've got listed in this project, uh, this is the step-by-step -step guide for you to deploy the service. Let's get started. I'm at the GitHub page, uh, and, and I'll note for reference, I'm using a desktop. You, you should use a browser to get the instructions. You certainly don't need one. Um, it just makes it a little bit easier, so I'll use one. But this is all done, all the commands are done through the terminal. And I'm at the GitHub page in my browser. We'll scroll up. And then if you'll notice under instructions for standalone deployments, which this is, see the playbooks directory. So we'll go there. And then scroll down to the instructions. We've got the Raspbian deployment. That's for Raspberry Pis. And then the Ubuntu deployment, 18.04 or 20.04. And this is, what is this? I think it's 20.04, yep. And we're good there. I think anything in between 18 and 20 would be fine as well. Uh, these are just the two long-term releases that are most recent. Uh, the very first thing we wanna do is make sure that our system is up to date. I'll copy this and paste it in. And I am asked for a password. This is a virtual machine on my local network. Fresh, not much going on. We'll give this just a moment to run. Okay, there we go. And my machine's already up to date. Next, we need to install git and python3 pip. We'll use git to clone the project and then pip to install Ansible. I'll say yes. I'll give that a moment and be back when it's done. Okay, everything has completed installing. We'll now use pip to install Ansible. And again, we'll give this a moment to run. I'll be back. Should be pretty quick. Ansible's done. Now, because Ansible is installed locally to our user, we need to tell our shell, our terminal, where Ansible was installed. So if I type in which bash, for example, user bin bash, we can see it. If I type in which Ansible, it's not found. These next two commands, Will help us out. I'll paste this one in. This is going to tell our bash profile where to find additional software and then this will activate that change that we just made to our bash profile. Uh, and at this point optionally reboot. This may be required if the system was out of date, uh, especially months out of date. So if you've got, uh, if you ran that first command apt update and apt upgrade and there were a whole bunch of things, especially kernel updates um, or docker if you have docker already installed, I would suggest that you do a reboot. Um, I've run into issues where I didn't reboot. I had newer libraries updated and upgraded, um, and then I didn't reboot and Docker failed to start the containers. So uh, this machine didn't have any updates. It's already been rebooted. It's good to go. I'm gonna continue. Next, we clone the project with Git. And then we're gonna set some variables. So I'm gonna grab this long set we're going to paste these in but let's edit let's save them in a text editor and then we'll edit them as needed and then paste them into our command prompt so what do we have we have the web port that's the port that it next cloud operates on 443 is the default https port um, if you're using this machine for more than one thing and you've already got that port assigned my suggestion would be to change it so that they don't overlap that it would fail if this port was already in use um, the only office port. This port also needs to be exposed to clients if you're going to um, do editing. So if, you're, uh, if you open a document and you're going to edit it, only office will open with this port to the client. So this port needs to be open as well. Then the public IP address. So this IP address, you can either set it to your public IP um, if you're going to access this remotely and keep in mind things like NAT or firewall rules if you're running this in the cloud, those will need to be done. Um, or you could set it to a, your local LAN IP if you're only going to access this through the LAN and then you don't have to worry about firewall rules. I'm gonna set it to my public IP address and there are many ways to get it. Uh, the quickest way that I can think of is asking DuckDuckGo what is my IP. And there it is. Copy that, paste it in, get rid of that extra space at the end. 
And then next, what do we have? We have the Docker network gateway, etc. These are all the IPs that are assigned to the Docker network and the containers that run in it. Uh, these don't necessarily need to be changed unless they would overlap with uh, IP addresses already on this system. Uh, if this system had other Docker containers and they were using these IPs by chance, you'd want to change it. Uh, for reference, it's all within a slash 24 and they're in order. So we've got zero, one, two, three, four. There is no five. It doesn't really matter. You could make that a five or a six. Uh, but they're all in a slash 24, so keep that in mind. And then finally, we've got the project directory. That's where uh, the service is installed on the machine. Slash opt is fine for me. So we'll copy all this. I would suggest saving it for reference later. Paste it in. And we'll continue. Scroll down here. Want to set your own admin database and only office password. So there are three passwords. There's the next cloud administrator and see admin is the username. Then there's the password for the database. You don't really ever need that unless say you're troubleshooting. And then there's the only office password and that's how Nextcloud and only office communicate securely with each other. You don't really need that either. Uh, you'll, you need to set it, um, but you don't need to know it. Uh, if you don't set any of these, they're all randomly generated and you can get them via catting these files uh, with sudo but you can also set them ahead of time. So I'll do that. I'm gonna grab all of this. I'm not gonna change these passwords. You could certainly change these to whatever you desired, make them secure, safe, and complex, and unique. But for this tutorial, I'll make them all the same, or some password one, two, three. All right, everything's been set. My passwords have been set. My variables have been set. We'll continue. And so we've got execute your playbook. If your server is configured for passwordless sudo, then you'd run this command. And if you're not configured for passwordless sudo, you'd run this. And the only difference is it's going to ask for your password. How do I know if I have passwordless sudo? Easy enough to figure out, open a new terminal, type in sudo who am I. If you're prompted for a password, you do not have passwordless sudo. So this machine does not have passwordless sudo. I will use the second command. Paste it in, type in my password, and Ansible will begin the installation. It will go through and make all of the changes to the server. Uh, give it some time, it shouldn't take too long, but it does need to install some packages, that sort of thing. Uh, there will be a play recap at the end, and I will be back for that. We have all the installation complete, um, and if you look down at the very bottom, failed equals zero. Uh, that tells us that there were no issues uh, across the entire playbook. The other numbers uh, or other stats might change a little bit or fluctuate, but the most important one failed equals zero. Uh, no errors were encountered. We also have the playbook summary, which is this output here. And I could try to go there now, but I need to set up port forwarding. And I'll go through that really quick. Uh, of course, port forwarding is going to be a little bit different in everyone's case. Uh, but essentially you need your server's IP address. So I will type in that command, IP add grep inet, find my LAN IP address. And if you remember, we have these two ports, uh, 443 for the web UI and 8443 for only office. I'll need to go into my router and I've already done this. So we've got next cloud and only office. We're defining two rules. On the external side, we're going to use the same IP address or same port numbers. Keep it simple. The IP address is my server, which is that 192 that I just grabbed from the terminal. And then on the internal side, it's the same port number as well, right? 443 to 443 and 8443 to 8443 for this. Hit apply. And now if I go to the URL, I should be able to log in. Warning potential security risk. It may look a little different in Chrome. This is Firefox. That's the same message. It's the fact that we have a self-signed certificate. That's okay. That's because we do have a self-signed certificate and the browser doesn't know whether it should trust it or not. The connection is still encrypted. This is expected. This is what we want. The username is NC admin. And then the password is that password that we set earlier. Right, so mine was some password one. I didn't edit it from the tutorial. If you didn't set it and it was randomly generated, you can get it with sudo cat and then that file path, right? So some password one, I'll type that in. Some password one, log in. 
All right, and there are two um, add-ons installed. One is only Office, as we saw, and I'll showcase that in just a second here. The other one is Talk. This is uh, almost a first-party app, but it's essentially a conferencing service, and you can install any add-ons um, that you want. Uh, I just happen to have these two installed by default. So we've got uh, Talk, and you could set up a video conference or a chat room, kind of nice. And then if I go to files and create a new document, this is of course where you would store all your files. So we'll create a new document. I'll call it test one, two, three. And you'll notice it opens a new tab but behind the scenes. This is where port eight, four, four, three comes into play, right? So your browser, even though your browser shows that you're still uh, using the default uh, port 443, which is HTTPS. Behind the scenes, it's connecting to only Office on port 8443. And we can edit a document as we want. And then it, it's automatically saved. You can see there all changes are saved. Um, it and also supports spreadsheets and that sort of thing. And there it is, there's my document. All right, and that about wraps it up. Feel free to customize Nextcloud as you want. Um, the only other thing I wanted to show was updates, right? So uh, keep in mind that Nextcloud only Office, and then if I run, so we've got Nextcloud only Office, then we also have two more containers. We have the web proxy and the database. Um, the database is based on MariaDB from linuxserver.io, by the way, check them out. Uh, they've got a lot of great containers. Uh, really well respected in the community. LinuxServer.io is their website. And then we have um, the web proxy, which is Apache HTTPD. All right, so all four of these containers occasionally will have updates. Um, and my suggestion would be maybe once a month or once every two months, or if there's a big security update that gets published, something along those lines, um, go ahead and update your containers. And I've got the instructions in the... Uh, frequently asked questions down near the bottom. How do I update my containers? In rough steps, you're essentially setting your variables again, which are these. Remember, you should have these saved. Then you're gonna remove the containers and reapply the playbook. So let's try it out. We don't need necessarily, these, this is for Raspberry Pi. We can just use the instructions up here. Actually, you know what, we'll, I'll need these. So we'll set our variables again. Right. Then we'll remove the old containers. Oh, and there we go. We actually have the, the Ubuntu one. The service is down until Ansible completes. Keep that in mind, right? So if I try to refresh this page, nothing's going to happen. The service isn't up anymore. Our data is still there. It, the service is just not running. All right. And then if I scroll back up, remember I have passwordless. I do not have passwordless sudo. So I'm going to run this guy. That's gonna ask me for my password. We'll let this run again and we'll get the newest containers. Uh, our services will be back up. I'll be back when it's done. Our URL again, actually I've still got that tab open. Let me retry and we are back. All right, so if there had been an update to Nextcloud or only Office or the web proxy or the database containers, um, everything is good to go and it took just a minute or two to rerun that playbook after we remove those containers. That wraps it up for deploying the service on Ubuntu. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, uh, Discord is definitely the best way to reach me. I've got a link to that in the description of this video and on the GitHub page. Um, you could also open a GitHub issue. Uh, if you've got a pull request, that's more than welcome as well. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a good day.